Hello, everyone. Hi. Good afternoon from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Ah, Maybe. that's Aslam. Hi. Uh, hi, Aslam. Uh, I was looking for you. Hi. Yeah. Yeah. Hi, Aslam. Uh, good afternoon from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. It is 3 p.m. now in Kuala Lumpur, 2 p.m. in Thailand, and 4 p.m. in South Korea and many, many PMs and AMs across the world. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Asia TEFL Professional Network Webinar Series. Yay! I'm Aslam Khan, your host for today's event. It's really nice to see lots of familiar faces, especially one very distinguished Can you person, make it bigger? which I must mention. Professor Lee, Professor Lee Yo Wong. Hi, nice to meet you again. We met many, many years ago in Malaysia, Korea, everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, one thing is for sure. We are here today because of passion. The passion in English language education has brought us together, together to this very insightful academic endeavor. We have participants from all over the world. And I would say more than 50 countries, ladies and gentlemen, 50 countries across the globe, from Pacific Ocean right to the Atlantic, from all the countries, all the islands in the Pacific region, right until America. Now, these are the numbers. These are the numbers. 926 people who have registered. I'm sure people are coming in, but not to worry. Not to worry. The, the amazing part of this congregation of English language education is a broad people together to Asia TEFL, one of the largest English language organization, if not the largest in the world. So due to this overwhelming response, today's webinar is also streamed live on Asia TEFL Facebook. So ladies and gentlemen, once again, Welcome to the Asia TEFL Professional Network Webinar Series 2021. Please raise your hand. Raise your hand. You can clap. I may not hear you, but I know the gestures. It's interesting to see familiar faces from across the globe. Friends, educationists, all in the English language education fraternity. Great friends, great times we had, and today is going to be one of the most amazing times ever in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and we'll share with you a short video clip about what the webinar series is all about. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this Oh, 
please be patient, a little glitch in the technicality. A little glitch there. All right, but not to worry. We'll find time to share it again. academic development and promoting friendship is part okay never mind we'll rectify the technical glitch in a while so ladies and gentlemen without the sound i think the ima images and also the lines will give us exactly the gist of what asia tefl professional network webinar series is all about and mind you uh, this is the first one the first one <laughs> and you will get more coming every month so remember all right so there will be more coming every month and today's webinar as you can see on your screen marks the first in the series and you can see very clearly that it is connecting Asia through English language education, the importance of building sustainable professional network. So ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, it is with great pleasure that we invite the joint president of Asia TEFL, Professor Ravinder Gargesh from India to deliver his welcome address. Professor Gargish, over to you. Thank you very much, Dr. Aslam Khan. A very warm welcome to all of you. This is a great historical day for Asia Tefl. <clears throat> the first event, the webinar series and the inaugural, inaugural webinar series, wonderful. On this occasion, my memory definitely goes back to Professor Ghana Subramaniam because the webinar series was his brainchild. And on this occasion, I would like to record my gratitude to Professor Ghana Subramaniam. On this occasion, I would like to welcome the committee headed by Professor Pragasi Sitikul. He has done a wonderful job. He will be the moderator also. He's done a wonderful job and uh, he has taken charge of the webinar series at a very a desperate time when we had no one to look after the webinar series. It, be it became even doubtful to hold one. But thanks to Professor Pragasit and his uh, excellent teamwork that this webinar series has, has, been, has seen the light of day. I'm very happy that uh, the Thai team and the Malaysian team have done wonderfully together. They have come together wonderfully. It's a wonderful collaboration between the two of them, a very successful one. And I would like to mention Dr. Khon Yu Chai from Malaysia. And of course, Professor Pragasi Sitikul from Thailand. They're heading the teams. And they have done an excellent job. Exemplary ded dedication from uh, Professor uh, Pragasit. Uh, human service he has done to Asia TEFL. A warm welcome to both, both the teams to, who are going to conduct this uh, webinar today and in future. Best of luck to both of both the teams. A very warm welcome to all our speakers, the very distinguished speakers. Each one of them very distinguished. 
We have Professor Willy Renandia from uh, Singapore. He's also the regional representative of Singapore. A renowned author, renowned speaker, very well known for his uh, views on uh, reading and listening. A wonderful scholar, excellent scholar. I think many people, most people have read him and he's one of the very popular scholars all over the world. We also have another very popular scholar, Professor Masaki Oda, our colleague from uh, uh, Tamagawa University, Japan. He is currently vice president membership of Asia TEFL. He's a very dynamic uh, leader and uh, he has shown exemplary courage in, on many occasions. And his writings and papers have, have also, are also very fascinating. I admire Professor Masaki's writing. We have another very dynamic professor, Professor Ju Kyung Park. Professor Ju Kyung Park is the Vice President Finance and Public Relations in Asia TEFL. But in addition to that, she's a wonderful scholar. And of course, a great singer also. But here we are looking at the scholar and I look forward to listening to her uh, wonderful lecture. She's from Honam University, South Korea. And last but not the least, another wonderful colleague we have, Professor Arifa Rahman from Bangladesh. She's from uh, University of Dhaka. And uh, she has also written much for Asia TEFL and abroad and in many other publications. And uh, I have, it's always a pleasure to listen to her. Always a pleasure to listen to her. So I warmly welcome all of you once again, and particularly the organizers and the speakers of this, uh, on this, of this webinar. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. A warm welcome to all the executive council members. A warm welcome to former president Hugh Wong Lee. A warm welcome to everyone. And best wishes to all of you. Look forward to a very exciting time. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Professor Gargish, all the way from India. Now back to Malaysia. Uh, Dr. Aslam Khan, I'm speaking from Samarkand, Uzbekistan. Oh, you are in Uzbekistan. <laughs> Though I'm from India, but I'm speaking at the moment from Samarkand, Uzbekistan. Oh, interesting place. One of the most beautiful places. Central Asia. We are in Central Asia now. <laughs> yes. Okay. Excellent. So back now to Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Thank you. All right. Thank you, uh, Professor Gargish. Yes, uh, the team comprises uh, uh, 15 people from Malaysia, Thailand, and South Korea. And... Please wait till the end and you see the people behind the success of this webinar. Later on, it's suspense, yeah? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the theme of today's webinar, Connecting Asia Through English Language Education, the importance of building sustainable professional network. We have lined up five very globally renowned English language education personalities in Dr. Willy, an old friend from Singapore, Professor Masaki Oda, also an old, old friend from Japan, Professor Arifa Rahman, also a friend from Bangladesh, Professor Ku Kyung Park, also a friend from South Korea, and of course, not forgetting, Professor Pragasit Sititiko from Thailand, the moderator. Ladies and gentlemen, a quick brief information about how this webinar is going to be conducted. There'll be two rounds in this webinar. In the first round, each panelist will be given 15 minutes for their presentation. And at the end of the fourth present, uh, panelist presentation, there will be a 15 minutes session for question and answer. All right, now, uh, Please share your questions in the chat box provided. And this applies to participants, participants who are also now attending this webinar on Asia TEFL Facebook Live. You also can send your questions to the link in the Mentimeter provided, which is being displayed on the screen now. All right. And in the second round, the panelists will provide a summary of the presentation in relation to the theme of today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, let's begin this academic endeavor. It's with great pleasure. Let me introduce the moderator. Professor Pragasit Sititiko 
is a full-time lecturer from the Language Institute, Thammasat University, Thailand. He earned a doctorate in language and literacy studies with a concentration in second language reading processes at the University of Illinois at Urbana Campaign USA. He's currently vice president of conferences and professional next networks in Asia TAFL. He's also an associate editor of 3L Journey Language, Linguistics, Literature, which is indexed in the Scopus Quartile One. He was the past president of Thai TESOL organization. He has extensive experiences in teacher training throughout Thailand. His areas of interest include second language literacy, cognitive and sociocultural factors in second language learning and intercultural issues in second language learning. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's put our hands together and welcome the moderator, Professor Pragasit Sititikul. Thank you very much, Professor Aslam, for your great introduction. Hi, everybody. Sorry, Krab. I'm Prakashit Sitidikun from Thailand. I will be the moderator today. As an educator in English language education, I'm pleased that the topic today focuses on the importance of building professional network because this issue is very significant and should be widely shared with insightful ideas by experienced persons. It is uh, undeniable to say that the power of a strong professional network can affect our career uh, success. When it's done well, networking will not only help us succeed in our job faster, but it will give us a competitive edge throughout every stage of our career. That's why networking is important to our success, and we will learn more about what we can do to improve our professional networking skills throughout the course of our career development from the distinguished speakers. Asia TEFL organization also see the importance of building professional network. So we agree to start our webinar series on this topic. Ladies and gentlemen, we are fortunate to have experienced scholars from four different countries to share their perspectives on this with the hope that their talks will inspire some of us to follow their ideas in order to grow professionally. Without further ado, let's meet with our first panelist, Dr. Ju Kung Park. Dr. Ju Kung Park is professor of English language and literature at Honam University in South Korea. Her teaching and research interests include teacher education, English as a lingua franca, and intercultural communication. She was president of Korea TESOL and the Applied Linguistics Association of Korea. Asia TEFL International Conference Chair in 2011 and 2020. Currently, she serves as Vice President of Finance and Public Relations Asia TEFL. You can see that Professor Park had lots of experience in developing professional networks in English language education. This is an excellent opportunity to hear from her. Professor Park, I have three questions for you to share. The first one, uh, can you tell us how networking contributes to career and professional development? Number two, as a vice president of Asia TEFL, what do you think Asia TEFL can do for building professional networks? And the last question, do you have any tips for networking for the audience, please? Professor Park, please welcome Professor Park. Can you turn on your mic? Sorry. Um, thank you very much uh, for having me, Dr. Uh, and for the nice questions. And hello, everyone. My name is Ju Kyung Park. I'm very happy and honored to be part of this uh, first Asia TEFL webinar and very historical event in the history of Asia TEFL. And let me share my uh, PowerPoint slides. OK. 
Can you all see this? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Um, this is what I'm going to talk about uh, today. Uh, first, I'm going to share uh, my uh, professional, the, my history of professional network, and then what kind of influences that my uh, professional network uh, have, has had on my uh, personal and professional life. And uh, I'm going to introduce uh, these professional networks in uh, Asia TEFL, and I'm going to share some tips for your networking. First of all, let me uh, start with uh, my 30 year uh, history of a professional network. Um, as you can see here, 1993, I uh, attended Cotiso International Conference. And then I joined this organization right away because I was very much impressed by the quality of this uh, international conference. And then um, at that time, there was no local chapter in my region. So I founded one uh, called Jolla chapter and served as the first uh, president. And um, within a year, uh, about 200 supporters uh, joined me. And based on that, uh, the, the very next year in 1994, I was uh, elected as the second vice president in 1995, uh, first vice president. And in 1996 and seven, I served as the president of Korea Tiso. And um, based upon this, uh, I guess my service and performance, a lot of Korean ELT associations uh, invited me to be on their executive council and board. Um, so that's how my uh, Korean domestic uh, networking has begun and uh, developed. And as CoTISO is the international, uh, TISO International and IATFO, uh, as the representative CoTISO, I began to work with all this uh, TISO and IATFO uh, affiliate leaders, uh, uh, leaders group. And particularly, I uh, worked very closely with this Pan-Asia Pan Consortium, and which uh, Cotiso started with Thai Tiso and Jolt first. And, and then later on, uh, it was expanded to ETA Rock uh, China, Chinese Taipei, and Fiat Russia, and LTES in Singapore, and more. So that's how, uh, as you can see, my global international networking has begun. And then I, uh, my second phase of professional uh, development began in 2003 uh, when Asia TEFL was founded uh, by uh, our founding president, uh, Dr. Hyo Ung Lee. And then uh, I joined as a founding member. And then we had 134 uh, founding members. They are from all different parts of the world, but particularly from these Asian countries. And then I served as General Secretary of, uh, of Asia TEFL for three years. And um, while I was serving as General Secretary, I uh, worked very closely all these uh, leadership uh, people from all these countries. And then uh, since uh, it's a foundation of Asia TEFL until now, I've been on this Asia TEFL Executive Council um, serving as a uh, uh, several different functions, uh, which means I uh, have been working very closely with all these leaders from these uh, Asian countries and beyond Asia. And then I was invited a speaker as a feature speaker in 2005 and plenary speaker in 2013. And um, when you uh, are invited as an invited speaker, uh, it was a great opportunity for you to give a talk but not only that, uh, you become a part of this uh, new uh, kind of professional network with other invited speakers. And that's exactly what happened to me. And then in 2011, I served as the Asia Tiffer Conference Chair. And as you know, when you uh, serve as a conference chair, you uh, have to work uh, all these different uh, groups of people, including uh, conference organizing committee and the uh, 
the number of invited speakers and the sponsors and all the other uh, affiliates and all. So that means your um, network kind of uh, blooms uh, with all these different uh, groups of people. And then my uh, next phase of professional development began in 2015 because I was elected as the ALAC president. ALAC stands for Applied Linguistics Association of Korea. And then it is an uh, international affiliate of ILAC, which is the International Association for Applied Linguistics. And the same thing um, that I uh, went through with COTISL happened again with this, uh, 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 my uh, new uh, position of ALAC president. I got to work with uh, a number of ILA international affiliates, including uh, JASIP in Japan, Celia in China. And at that time, ALAC was planning to host a 2023 ILA World Congress. Uh, and then I was the chair of the, um, uh, the 2020, 2023 ILA World Congress uh, bidding committee so that I uh, got to work with uh, all these uh, 2017 and 2020 ILA World Congress organizing committees. They are uh, from Brazil and uh, uh, Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, and then I, um, so because of this experience of working with ILA and um, their affiliate leaders, uh, my global network uh, went, went to another level. And then uh, most recently uh, in 2020, I was uh, the conference chair, but uh, remember 2020 Asia, uh, Asia TEFRA conference was the very first hybrid conference, which means I had to work with uh, totally different uh, groups of people, including uh, those from technology uh, field and the mice field. And uh, we got uh, domestic and uh, international sponsors and um, different groups of uh, the invited speakers and all. So that, that made me uh, have another uh, group of uh, professional networks. And then this year, uh, these are all the different professional uh, networks that I, I am uh, working with. Um, so these professional uh, networks have uh, greatly uh, uh, influenced on my professional life. Um, so for example, in, in terms of professional development, which uh, serves uh, for uh, my self-actualization, which is the term um, uh, honed by uh, Maslow, uh, they include like the uh, leadership positions that I have uh, served, and then all these invited talks and presentations, and book chapters and papers that I was invited to write, and then joint researches that I've done with other uh, uh, people, and then program developments and domestic and international exchanges. And, and of course, this is not an exhaustive list. And then uh, the, the second uh, aspect of uh, the influence that uh, professional networks have uh, is uh, career satisfaction. In other uh, word, uh, I would say well-being. Like um, you get this advanced knowledge and skills. And because of this advanced knowledge and skills you uh, get, uh, you uh, get more empowered and you get this confidence and pride in your career. And then, of course, you get this collegiality and the, the spirit of togetherness. And then, um, ultimately, you have this happiness, love, and peace, which is true value and the meaning that we all pursue uh, in this age of well-being. Um, and now, let me introduce uh, these professional uh, networks uh, in Asia TEFL. And, of course, all these... Uh, groups uh, require some sort of uh, experience and expertise and service. Um, so for example, number one, ex we have executive council and board. This is a very special group. Uh, but of course, uh, if you want to join this particular group, you need to have some uh, year of service for Asia TEFL and expertise. But um, we have some positions that are available for those who have uh, none of this experience for uh, uh, the serving for Asia TEFL. For example, uh, now we have publicity committee. Let me uh, highlight this. 
Publicity Committee, which I am the chair of, and I am working with all these uh, committee members from South Korea, Japan, China, Indo Indonesia, Malaysia, India, Thailand, Vietnam, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. And many of these committee members are uh, pretty new to Asia TEFL, um, but they are uh, working very hard and they're very experienced um, ELT uh, professionals. So I'm pretty sure these people will move on to a higher, uh, I guess, leadership position in the near future. And if you are interested in publicizing Asia TEFL in your own region, and you can join us if you uh, have some uh, skill to, to do that. Now, international conferences. Asia TEFL conferences are held um, every year in rotating the venue. So when your uh, region or country hosts Asia TEFL International Conference, you can join the conference organizing committee, and then you can be a presenter and you can serve as a volunteers. So uh, you can be a, a good uh, professional network for international conference. And then we have publications and we, uh, Asia TEFL uh, publishes uh, the uh, quarterly journal and um, uh, Asia TEFL book series and we have publication committee and editorial board. And of course, uh, in order to join these uh, uh, groups, you need to have some uh, experience and expertise in publication. Now, we have a webinar series and uh, chaired by Dr. Pragasya Sittitiko, uh, who is the moderator of this uh, webinar. And then the current webinar committee uh, is a joint group of mostly from uh, Malaysia and Thailand, but I'm sure uh, they will uh, welcome you uh, to join uh, their committee. And then you can uh, join this uh, particular group as presenters and panelists, and then uh, maybe as the minimum kind of role as general attendees. And then lastly, uh, not the least, we have research network called the REN, uh, which is chaired by Dr. Chiu Fang Wen, and they are regional and international research groups. They do joint research on a topic of uh, the each group uh, cho cho chooses. And then the research results are presented at the conference and published as Asia TEFL book series. So for example, this year, uh, 2021 Asia TEFL uh, REN members were invited as for the featured presentations and symposium on online English teaching and teacher development during and after the pandemic. Now, um, this is uh, some tips of not only from uh, myself, but uh, th these, uh, these are what the other uh, networking experts uh, advise you to do. So number one, attend uh, these professional network events and activities online and in person to see and hear what they are like. And so for example, conferences, webinars, workshops, symposia, and, and et cetera. And then when you see uh, if, the, if these uh, the events and activities suit your wants and needs, then join some of them like Asia TEFL and our uh, professional networks, and of course, other professional organizations and groups. And then once you become, um, a member of these uh, professional networks, be an active contributor uh, to your uh, PNs. And recently I got to learn that uh, be an active contributor is actually one of the, um, the educational goals of Singapore. And, and I, I thought uh, it was a brilliant idea. And it is not only for Singapore, Singaporean people, but this is uh, good for all of us. So uh, once you become a member of any uh, professional network, be an active contributor. Uh, and then uh, you can start uh, as an audience asking questions to the presenters. And then uh, you can move on to be a presenter. And then uh, you can work as an organizer. Um, and then once uh, you uh, show some of your performances, now you need to be ready to be joined by others, which means with your uh, experience and expertise shown to the others, they will uh, become uh, inviting you. And then 
which means you need to make yourself uh, to be someone who uh, other people want to work with. And also you need to uh, make yourself available when uh, needed. So uh, when you uh, were invited, accept invitations and share your experience and expertise. And then um, when you uh, get involved uh, with a number of PNs, you, you may need to choose to stay or leave some of them, depending on your short-term and long-term goals. And then once you uh, settle down with uh, your uh, PNs of your choice, now all you need to do is stay safe and healthy, particularly in this uh, pandemic situation, and live happily ever after with your PNs. And actually, um, among our Asia TEFL council members, uh, we, have, uh, we have people in their late 70s and 80s, and we've been uh, working with them for more than 20 years, and for some of them uh, even more for more than uh, longer than 30 years. So it's, it's kind of lifetime relationship. So, well, this is all I have for now. So thank you, everyone. And if you want uh, some professional networking with me, you can email me to this email address. Thank you very much, Professor Park, for sharing your wonderful first-hand experience. And you share with us a history of your professional networks, which is amazing. You talk about professional networks and professional development and career satisfaction from your perspective. And finally, you nicely give us uh, some tips, okay, for networking, which I'm sure that this is very useful. Thank you very much, Professor uh, Park. Ladies and gentlemen, here comes our second panelist. I'm sure that many of us know him or are familiar with his name. He is Dr. Uh, Willy Renanya. Dr. Willy Renanya is a language teacher educator with extensive teaching experience in Asia. He currently teaches applied linguistics courses at the National Institute uh, of Education, Singapore. He maintains a large language teacher professional development on Facebook and ELT website and a YouTube channel. Professor Billy has extensive experience uh, giving presentations and lectures at many uh, conferences and universities. He is also a regular guest uh, speaker in Thailand. Professor Billy, uh, based on your personal experience, please share with us how you have built connections by social media and how this can help us grow professionally. Professor Billy, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ajahn Pragasit. And uh, thank you so much. Uh, Joo Kyung for such an inspiring presentation. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Joo Kyung and I went back a long way. I first met her some 20 years ago. I think the first time was in Thailand, but I met her and also uh, Ji Hyun Jeon, the uh, past uh, Asia TEFL president uh, at the uh, Asia TEFL conference in uh, Thailand back then. Was it in Thailand? Yes, in Thailand. And we have kept in touch with each other for many, many years uh, up to now. It's about 20, uh, 30 years. Ladies and gentlemen, today I just want to share with you some of my personal experiences of building and uh, you know, expanding relationships with a lot of people in our field, uh, English language education. The key takeaway, I think this is something that Joo Kyung has already mentioned. Uh, the key takeaway of today's uh, webinar actually is this. If you want to go fast, do it alone, go alone. But if you want to go far, you need to go with others. I think this is something that I've learned along the way that it's not possible for you to go very far. You need people and people also need you. And if we work together, I think we'll be able to reach greater success in our career uh, in, our, in, our, in our social life and in, in our professional life as well. Professional networking is not just about having a lot of friends. Yes, I do have a lot of friends. I do have a lot of Facebook friends, but professional networking is more than that. It's about making connections. It's about connecting with people. And it's more importantly, it's about building and maintaining lasting relationships with other professionals. 
with Ajahn Pragasit. I think I've known him for many, many years, and I've known a lot of people from his university as well, Tamasat University, uh, one of the best universities in Thailand. Great people, uh, great friendships that I have forged over the years. With uh, Aslam Khan uh, in Malaysia, I have to address him as Anti Aslam. He is a great guy as well. He's been very active in, uh, in uh, what is the name of your organization, Aslam? The uh, Mail Thai, isn't it? Yes, Malaysian English Language Teachers Association. A great guy that I met very often uh, in, many different, in, many different, in many different places, uh, especially uh, in conferences. So again, professional networking is about connecting, building, maintaining lasting relationships with other people. And you can do it on site, you can do it online as well. So the key thing is not just about making connection, but about building and maintaining lasting relationship. It's about planting relations. The success, I think you will agree with me, and also Ju Kyung mentioned this a lot in her presentation, that successful networking is all about giving. You can't simply ask, what is it for me? I think the most important thing that keeps uh, people like Ju Hyung and me going is what is it I, I can give to other people? Yeah, if that is your interest, then I think your networking experience will be very, very uh, fruitful, very, very productive for you. It's about helping and serving others. And once you've done this, you'll be surprised that other people will come to you and you will be able to seek help from them uh, as well when you do need help from them. I was reminded of this quote by this great uh, scientist, uh, Margaret Mead. She is uh, one of the best known uh, cultural anthropologists. And she says this, we are at our best when we serve others. So serving others is the uh, spirit of professional uh, networking. Let me tell you a story, ladies and gentlemen. My networking story began when I moved to Singapore working at this wonderful, wonderful English language center called Simeo RELC. It's a very, very special place because the mandate of Simeo RELC is this, to improve the quality of language education in Southeast Asia, in particular, those Simeo member countries. Now there are 10 Simeo member countries, yeah? And this is what happens. I was so fortunate because networking is something that comes very naturally. People actually came to me, came to my center. And that's how I got to know a lot of people, a lot of teachers, a lot of language teachers, a lot of language teacher educators, policy makers, curriculum and materials writers. And also in addition to that, world-class ELT experts. So RLC, CIMA RLC located in Singapore, is like a magnet for a lot of people in the same field as I am to be coming together. And that is how I get to know them. And that's how I build my relationship with them. And that's how I continue to maintain that relationship as well. Although Simeo RLC is Southeast Asia, in reality, a lot more people from other countries also come and visit uh, Simeo RLC. Masaki Oda, for example, from Japan, and also many other professors from Japan uh, used to come to RLC. Uh, that was some 20, uh, 50 years ago. So that was a story of RLC, yeah? How I got to know a lot of people because it's something that, you know, comes very naturally to me. People came and I got to know them. And then in 2008, that was about more than 10 years ago, I relocated to another university. Uh, and the name of the university is the National Institute of Education, Nanyang Technological University. I work at the uh, college at the School of Education. Now, interestingly, the, the majority of the students back then when I first joined the uh, institution was Singapore students mostly, and also Singapore teachers. Because, because uh, NIE uh, primarily serves the needs of English language teachers in uh, Singapore. More recently, uh, we have been able to attract people from other countries to come and study uh, with us as well. People from China, people from Vietnam, from India, and from many other places. So I was a little bit lonely because 
the context, the network that I had before, sort of, mm, I felt a bit disconnected. And this is when I began. I began my next step in my networking experience. I made use of a social networking site, Facebook, in order for me to reach out to other people uh, in the region and also uh, across the globe, basically. And up to now, I've been looking after this Facebook group for about 10 years. And the name of the Facebook group is Teacher Voices. And this is how uh, my networking or my network of friends began to grow exponentially. Teacher Voices now have more than 10,000 members coming from 50, maybe more different countries in the world. And this is where people, including me, share on the daily basis news about English language teaching, news about teaching ideas, uh, sharing ideas about research, uh, new publications that people have just uh, came up with, and then a lot of information about conferences, about calls for papers and calls for uh, chapters as well. So I've been using this platform to reach out to a lot more people so that I can share resources with them and also for a platform for other people to network with other professionals, including me, uh, in terms of exchanging and sharing information. Very, very useful uh, information. Let me now share with you uh, some 10 benefits. Sepulu, Aslam, 10 is Sepulu, yeah? Sepulu benefits Sepulu. of uh, professional networking. Uh, these are things that Ju Kyung already mentioned before, but I would like to elaborate a little bit on what, you know, based on my own experiences. Uh, number one is wider perspectives about ELT. So that is one big benefit for you. Yeah, if you work in a silo, if you work only, if you know only about English language teaching in your country, that's not a bad thing. But I think it's much, much more important for you to understand what is happening uh, in the uh, bigger, uh, you know, field of English language teaching in the region. Uh, for example, as for me, I now have come to understand how one approach to teaching language called extensive reading is understood or sometimes misunderstood by people in the region and how it is implemented in different countries in Asia. I also got to know how CEFR, for example, the uh, Common Euro European Framework of Reference has been understood or misunderstood and implemented in different parts of the world like Thailand, uh, Vietnam, uh, Malaysia and other countries uh, in different parts of the world. Number two, it's a great opportunity. Networking provides this great opportunity for you to do joint research, joint publications and also joint workshops and joint presentations as well. I've done numerous papers, joint presentations and joint authorships with a lot of people uh, from the region, from Korea, from Indonesia, from Vietnam, and uh, from other places as well. And I find this really very enriching because, because it's not just my view, which can be very limiting and limited, but it's the view of, it's, it's a collective view of people from other parts of the world. Uh, the other one is access to research participants. There are times when you want to do research uh, that is more encompassing. It's not just about uh, participants from your country, but also participants from other countries in the region. If you have a large network of contact, I think it will help you in terms of uh, you know, access to research participants. I remember some 20 years ago, I, 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 I did a big survey involving uh, teachers from different parts of Asia. And I contacted people, my contact from these different countries, and I was able to get some 300 participants uh, to uh, participate in my study. I think that was really something which is really nice. Uh, another benefit is this, insider, access to insider uh, information. I think there's a lot of information that is not avail available for the public. The official documents very often is 
not for us to see. But if you know people like Aslam, for example, who is very knowledgeable about the uh, changes in policies and things like that, I think you can drop him an email or give him a call and ask you and ask him, hey, Aslam, what is happening here in Malaysia? Uh, I think he will be able to give you a lot of information. The real story behind, for example, new language education policy, which may or may not be available publicly, but you may be able to access this through uh, your contact. Uh, access to local literature. This is another important thing. Uh, we tend to use literature published by big journals in our field. Yeah. But when it comes to understanding uh, the kind of things that are happening in Malaysia, in Thailand, in Vietnam, for example, I think you need to go to the local uh, journals, local publications. And one way to do that, to have access to this, will be for you to contact Ajahn Pragasit. Can you let me have some, you know, uh, published papers on, uh, you know, communicative language teaching uh, in different provinces in Thailand, for example. Yeah. Uh, the last point is something that I've been doing the past few months. It's very, very, very interesting. Guest lecturing used to be very expensive. If you, in the past, if you invited Aslam come to come, come to come to my university to give a guest lecture, I had to look after his accommodation, his per diem, and I had to take him to a nice place for dinner and things like that. But these days, no, Aslam, just use the Zoom to give the lecture, <laughs> yeah. So big, big benefit now. And I think guest lecturing is a great pedagogy. It's useful for you. It's useful for your students as well. Yeah, it should not be the case that the students should be listening to you all the time. You can also invite experts from other places to give lecture. The key thing is this reciprocal uh, relationship, reciprocal guest lecturing, if you like. So the principle of uh, reciprocity will become very important here. I do one for you, you do one for me. No money is exchanged. You don't have to pay me, I don't have to pay you. So very easy to organize. Uh, three more things and then I'm done. Number seven is extremely important. Increase visibility of you as a professional, as an academic. Uh, increase visibility of your research, increase visibility of your expertise as well because if you know a lot of people out there you can share your work you can share your research publications with a wider group of people these days you can't just sit still get one paper published and then don't not doing anything i think that is not a very good thing to do you need to tell the world that you have done something good and you want to share that thing with other people uh you know uh, increase academic impact as well. If you know people like Ajahn Pragasit and you know that he is very much interested in reading, in, liter uh, in, in literacy development, and you have done something in that area, then you might want to send your recently published or newly published paper to Ajahn Pragasit and then send him the paper, send him the paper and tell him, Ajahn Pragasit, this is something nice for you and for your students to use uh, in your teaching. Yeah. And that is something that I would call impact of your uh, research. Uh, your citations may also increase because then a lot more people know uh, about your published work. Yeah. And number nine, very important too, if you're thinking of relocating to Korea, for example, to Japan, I think you can ask, you know, your contact ask Masaki. Masaki is an important person. Uh, he is dean of Tamagawa University. You can just ask him, call him, hey Masaki, is there a job available for me? Things like that, yeah? Job opportunities may, uh, you know, something that may, uh, you may want to be able to find out there. Number 10, this is my last benefit. Aslam, do you know what this is? Aslam? Number 10. Yeah, this is number 10. The benefit is very, very important. The social benefit. When you find yourself in Kuala Lumpur, you just give Aslam a call. Hey, Aslam, let's have a drink or two. Yeah, and when you are in Thailand, you can also call up your friends. And uh, that is very important for you to reconnect and socialize with uh, your contacts. 
finally, ladies and gentlemen, finally, 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 to flourish in your career, I think you need to grow three things. Number one, your academic capital. That means your teaching and your research knowledge and skills will have to continue to grow. That's number one. That will be your academic capital. Number two is your psychological capital. Very important. Academic capital alone is not enough. You need to have this thing called motivation and perseverance. Success is almost always guaranteed if you have these two things in place, motivation and perseverance. It's been called grit, G-R-I-T, grit. And finally, you also need to grow your social capital. Social capital is where professional networking comes into the picture. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, I end my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. Excellent job, Professor Willie. Uh, thank you for your great information and your dedication to ELT. Your experience of building connections by social media is awesome and can be ma magnificent guidelines for many of us to follow your professional path. Your information sharing is much appreciated. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, our two panelists have finished sharing their impressive talks in the first round. Now it's time for our third distinguished panelist from Japan. He is uh, Professor Masaki Oda. Masaki Oda is Professor of Applied Linguistics at Hamagawa University in Tokyo, Japan, where he also serves as Dean of College of Humanities and Graduate School of Humanities. He is Vice President for Membership of Asia TEFO. He has his PhD from Georgetown University and specializes in uh, social political aspects of language teaching. Professor Oda is also very active and has contributed okay, to both uh, national and international teacher associations, including Asia TEFO for a number of years. Professor Oda, could you please share with us about the mode and value of establishing national and transnational collaboration based on your experience, please, Professor Oda. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction and very good afternoon to you, everybody. And, uh, you know, I'm always, you know, I'm already so impressed with uh, my colleagues' presentation and a lot of things I would agree were 120%. And uh, so, but uh, I would do some kind of follow-up uh, and as well as, you know, Arifa, another distinct speaker who is coming next. And so I try to uh, kind of uh, fill the gap. Uh, and so... Uh, Hopefully this is beneficial. So this is an outline of my presentation. So I just try to organize myself not to talk too much in a limited time. Uh, we talk about this, uh, what is that, this pandemic now, and how this pandemic changed this national and transnational collaboration in the profession. And uh, based on my experience the last three years, so uh, of course I'd like to talk about this kind of my life story about the, like Jukyun Day, then, which is very nice. And it was a really good reflection of myself while I was listening to her presentation. Um, so then I would just specifically talk about people complained uh, in the earlier phase of this pandemic, people complain, especially those of us who are in education, say, well, we are losing this face-to-face -face interaction. And we are afraid that everything will shut down. And face-to-face -face has been actually considered as a counterpart of online. So online is not really face-to-face, not, not the synchronous something. But in reality, what is happening now, right now? How many countries represented here? We're doing face-to-face -face online communication here right now and exchanging ideas like that. And uh, I will talk about, especially there are a lot of people with a lot of stages of experience uh, in English language teaching or linguistics here. There are some students here. There are some uh, practitioners here. There are some of them who are teacher trainers here. Some of them already retired. Um, but I will just focus on more on those who are in the early stages of professional and 
how you can start building network, international networks through uh, in during this uh, pandemic. Let's begin. So before pandemic, so let me give you my anecdote. Uh, in the 2019, Asia TFO conference was held in Bangkok and nobody would expect, expect had expected what would happen a year later. So when I went to Bangkok, uh, like what, what had been a routine for the university professor, uh, the June was a time that it was a middle, middle of the semester in Japan. So I have to do all the official uh, procedure to uh, go to get the permission to go to this wonderful once a year networking opportunity in Bangkok. So I had to make up classes and I had to split my admin work. At that time, I was the director of Inchang Center. So, so I had to finish most of the things before I took off and also the other things. And uh, I have to dedicate some duties to my colleagues. And I'm sorry, could you do my makeup? Something like that, a lot of things. It was just two years ago. The university didn't accept what we call, now it is a default, it's online synchronous teaching. I say, when I submit that, you know, ask for the permission to go to the international conference during the time time, and they have to get a dean's authority. Now I'm a dean, so I can do it myself. But uh, um, I have to say, okay, how would you make up your classes? Something like that. They I said online from Bangkok using Skype at the time, okay? And say, that's impossible. That's online. So it is not, you cannot guarantee the quality. So it's just automatically rejected. So I had to do something. So then uh, actually uh, I was first time, so it will not be counted. So I had to do another extra class, but I actually, my student agreed and then I would do the test from uh, the ambassador hotel in Bangkok and they had, so between sessions as I uh, did my class in the Skype at the time, uh, this is a wonderful conference that uh, we did organized and so this was, uh, so, but uh, 15 minutes after this session was which I went upstairs to my room and I was doing this. And still students seems to be happy, but I think administrators are not happy about it because simply I did. But it was really worked. And then, then I just uh, was looking for some of the good software, uh, which is like uh, even smoother and some, and then I found the thing so-called Zoom in the October. Then uh, it was another part of network and we and uh, actually myself went to San Jose, California for the another conference. Again, during the term time. Then I used Zoom for the first time in my life and worked very well. And then I just say, you know, why don't we, now I didn't know what's gonna happen two months later. Then here, so actually this was just two years ago. Imagine you said when this pandemic spread there, how did you feel when you first thought that your class would be going online? Do you remember? Then everybody was worried about that. I was like this. Of course I was, I believed there's gonna be something, we can do something and we can maintain quality. We'll do, and then contact with students and the colleagues, how we may lose, you have to stay home. Well, Tokyo is stay still the, under the state of emergency, but they are still talking about Olympics. So I, or I don't want to do any politics today, but um, yeah. And uh, technical issues. This is something that everybody's worried about. What happens if like uh, connection is lost and something like that? And worried about how long the situation was. So it was like a way in the dark. Then a year later. So this is the actually second academic year under uh, this kind of pandemic things. And here's what has happened to my life. So actually I have just, uh, when uh, what uh, Jukun and then also Wei was talking about is networking. So I had my own professional networking and also my job as a teacher, uh, networking. So I have like networking with the professional, both the international colleagues and the domestic organization. And uh, let me talk about this, for this one. 
So I've been the vice president of Asia Tefo uh, since uh, 2013. And uh, it was a routine. Yes, we exchanged email, but we got together at the conference meet and we had a meeting and it was a kind of reunion. This is fine. I think we have more contact, more continue, continuous interaction. We meet regularly every month. We have, okay, uh, like I send, I send some email to somebody and say, okay, uh, well, would you meet, uh, meet on the Zoom again? And the, the guy, next Friday, something like that, we'll do that and we'll get things done. And also see how this uh, webinar has been organized in this situation. So it's a constant communication. So it's, you know, of course it is a different form. There are some inconveniences, but we've learned a lot and how to do it. And uh, rather than complaining that we take this good things out of this. How about the conference? Now I can go and I can ask my student to go to, okay, now you attend the conference, Tai Tiso conference. I attend the Merita conference, if it's online something, and you go to Asia Tepo, like in the hybrid conference. Also, we wish we could participate, but, uh, and, you know, I can send more students going to participate. This wonderful international conference. First as a participant, then would you like to present that? So I have some student, graduate student who participated in the Asia Tefo conference, and then uh, who actually uh, asked questions to the graduate students in Thailand, for example, and uh, who had the same interest and then keep in contact. And then, okay, now I think I can, I'm ready, something like that. Okay. How about teaching? We can just say now at the time you had like, uh, Zoom and just one thing. And then I think university supporting system, they got used to the supporting system. And also we are now familiar with Zoom and maybe some people use it like Teams and Cisco WebEx and Google Classroom, something like that. So we are, it's like we become multilingual. It's a kind multi, I don't know how would you say it. Maybe I have to create a word, something this. So, uh, you really have to take, we can really have to take advantage of combination of synchronous and asynchronous. So, you know, uh, when we meet face to face, this is more like uh, synchronous only, that's okay. But uh, it is because uh, we have to, we are in a different time zone. This is, I've gone back to the edge of for things. So we exchange things first. Okay, let's talk about it. It's very efficient, something. And it's nice, you can read, of course you cannot, uh drink well, i used to like uh when i drop into singapore something i just go with yeah, and then we had a wonderful like a noodle dinner a couple of years ago but uh yeah and also this combination or a little communication something and also as well as students of course uh, students are using sns so it is nice and then they're more uh, it it's more accessible there yeah. so i think we should live with this and take an advantage of um, there. But uh, what I'd like to say is now pandemic cross the border. Maybe it looks like physically, but I think borders are open or even borders has, have been rifted. And so we can take advantage of this. So uh, responding to uh, what uh, Jukyun said and Willis said, uh, especially in the early stage of professional development, and I would like to say, like, you know, for uh, the reason you go to conferences, you get input, first things. And then you, uh, you know, do the interaction. So input part. Well, I would say now you have more opportunity to join international event like this one that you are joining. And the Asia Telfo continues to serve this. And this is a great, I think, starter opportunity. Join international organization, maybe my role as a membership chair, but uh, you know, international, uh, you know, uh, no, if you uh, join the organization, not just like that, therefore, but maybe you are like a national organization, you have a network, and then participate in international conference. This was very it's kind of obstacle because I think you know, you, you don't have a time, you don't have a finance, and you are not presenting something like that. Now you can join many conferences and, and all you can do from home. Of course, there are some difference, some technical difference. And the international one, 
And this interaction part, this is very, uh, this is actually the same things as what we said, the exchange idea. It used to be the case like when I invite Willy, this has to be very, very formal. And, uh, but now I, this morning, actually, I just uh, visited uh, someone from Southern Sumatra and then just, uh, I appeared in the 20 minutes and say the English as a lingua franca. And then uh, I, tonight, I'll be visiting my friend's class in Vancouver, British Columbia. Uh, and just, you know, it's a part of lecture and they just like uh, answering questions. But uh, now this is my credit to say in exchange coming back to uh, my class. And then also we are trying to establish a kind of uh, web chat room something for the both students so that you can, you can, your student can discuss this. I'm using Slack or something. So you can do the student level exchange. So this kind of grass thing is possible. And then I think you have to take opportunities. And then I say, why well, say the teacher voices? Now I would like to thank Willie about it because this is also a, a kind of a very good opportunity for me to uh, be familiar with, uh, get connected with the colleagues at the different stages that they, especially like Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Southeast Asia, Singapore. Uh, also I know there are some people but uh, so I think now it became the one of the most frequent uh, appear, uh, appearant, uh, frequent appearant uh, Japanese applied linguistry in Indonesia and Malaysia, I think, <laughs> for the last five years. Uh, so uh, this kind of things. So, you know, in compared with the, uh, my colleagues, uh, two of my colleagues who are, whose presence has been very, very organized, but uh, I'm just trying to do uh, now, this is a great chance for the big, those who are beginning the profession to just move forward. Again, this may be a step button establishing network while you're at home. And uh, so my conclusion, and this is, I will talk about this, but actually uh, IJTF4 is one of them. You have like a Thai TSO, or you have all the Melter, Jasset, etc. cetera. Um, first, maybe you may be a little bit passive, you get information, but gradually you become active in the way you can, and I think that will guarantee the development and the growth of your professions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Oda. Your talk is really interesting indeed, and it is very timely as well. Now, I'd like to welcome our last but not least, a panelist. She's from Bangladesh. Her name is uh, Dr. Arifa Rahman. Dr. Arifa Rahman is English language professor, teacher educator, researcher, and intercultural trainer in Bangladesh. She has published widely in international books and journals. Her research interests are in equities, in language policy and programs, educational context and culture, law resource settings, and the development of language teachers through professional associations. Professor Arifa has contributed a lot in English language education. I know that she has worked with many organizations. So we would like to hear her thoughts. Professor Arifa, uh, could you enlighten us what local or national language teachers associations are doing in terms of the issue of professional networking, please. Thank you, Professor Sitiku. And uh, thank you to all the uh, previous uh, presenters who have given such wonderful presentations. I don't know how much I can add to what they have said, but what I can do is to actually relate uh, a real life experience with uh, language teachers from uh, different uh, countries that uh, we actually exercised during March this year. So if I'd like to share my screen, uh, can, any, can, can you see this? Hello? Not yet, Arifa. Not yet? Nope, How do I, I get this? Yeah, I can see you. Can you see now the share screen? I think it's happening. Yeah, it's coming. Slowly, slowly happening. It's coming. Not yet. Yeah. Am I doing anything wrong? I mean, <clears throat> I've, I've pressed the share screen. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, maybe try again. Exit first and then. Exit and try. And try again, right. yeah. Can you? Okay, nope. Oh dear. It's not there. Well, I've, I've clicked on share. So. Anyway, um, I, I can share your screen. Okay. Okay, you, I, I will help you. I will help you. Okay. okay. Can you stop sharing first? First, stop sharing. Okay. Yeah. Nothing is working. It's all frozen. Sorry, what's happening? I mean, it seems to be frozen. We've got that um, going on. Maybe okay, my network okay. is okay. having a, yeah. I've stopped sharing. No, it's working now. It's working. Go on, uh, Professor Arifa. Mm, I think she's got a connection problem. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, what I'd like to do is uh, I'd like to talk about language teachers associations and the long standing partnership practices with other regional teachers, which is uh, oh. You, you can tell me to click your slides. I, I can click the slides for you. Yeah, you can click the slide. Right, okay. Oh, sorry, Fa, are you still with us? No. Professor Arifa, are you with us? No, she's, she's not. Okay, then I think uh, we should, okay, uh, invite uh, some, some questions from the audience, all right? Okay, okay. Uh, Dr. Aslam, okay, we'd like to uh, uh, take the floor because yeah. uh, something wrong with, uh, you know, the Wi-Fi or whatever from Arif, Dr. Arifa's okay. site. Sure. Okay. Mm. Thank you, uh, Professor Pragasit. Yes, I think there's a major storm in uh, Dhaka, the capital mm. of Bangladesh mm. now. So I think that is the uh, reason why the internet connection is, uh, you know, is kind of uh, hindered, yeah? This, uh, never mind. We always believe that there's always a solution. Let's go to the questions while waiting for... Uh, Professor Arifa to come back. Okay, there's a question here, Professor Pragasit. Uh, question one, yeah? Uh, teaching English is a market biased to native speakers, especially in Asia. What tips or advice do you have to help non-natives overcome this issue in networking or scoring? Or so, I mean, I'm reading exactly, yeah? Or scoring jobs. I'm going to read 
exactly what is written. All right? So that is the question. Could you repeat it? Okay. Teaching English is a market biased to native speakers, especially in Asia. What tips or advice do you have to help non-natives overcome this issue in networking or scoring jobs? Maybe Professor Willie, I think you can answer this yes, question, no, right? No issue, I don't think. When it comes to networking, you can network with everyone, native, non-native, everyone under the sun. But when it comes to getting a job, I think networking can help a little bit, but it won't solve your problem. Remember what I said at the end of my presentation, there are three things that you need in order to grow, in order to be successful in your career. Number one is your academic capital. Are you good? I don't believe that native speakers are by nature better teachers. That's not true. I know native speaker teachers who are excellent. I know native speaker teachers who are just average, just like many of us, yeah? Like many of us here in the audience, some of us are very good. Some, some other people are not so good. But what you need to do is to continue to grow your professionalism. Be the best that you can be. And when you have done that, networking is going to help a great deal. It doesn't matter whether you are born in Indonesia or in Malaysia or in Thailand or in many other places. As long as you're good, people will hire you. Yeah. I think, I think relationship helps as well, because remember what I said about insider information. Sometimes the information is not available publicly. There may be a job vacancy at Duke Young's university. You may not have seen the uh, publicity, but if you know Duke Young, maybe she can give you some tips. Hey, really, there's, an, there's a vacancy here in my university, and I've always wanted to work at Duke Young's university. Thank you. Next question, please. Thank you. Can I add something? Yes, sure, sure. Across the park, yes. Yes, um, actually, getting a job is a is a reality, and uh, it's actually beyond our individual uh, ability and, and, and capacity. Because, uh, for example, in Korea, uh, it relates to the, the uh, public policy. So, uh, in order to uh, solve this problem, we uh, ELT professionals need to work with these uh, policymakers and then educate them. And not only the, the uh, administrators, but uh, the public as well, the parents and, and students. So it's, I think we still uh, have a long way to go, but uh, I, it, the, the society is changing. So there, I, I think we need to uh, keep our hope alive. Thank you. Well, yes, can, I, can I add something for that? Definitely. Uh, actually, uh, my previous position was the director of Center for uh, English as Lingua Franca, which was uh, actually, uh, we have the same problem. We had the same, and we still have the same problem in Japan. But uh, what we did was, we are talking about native speaker or non-native speaker, it's kind of binary distinction. So actually, we, uh, we were the first university in Japan that will give a job advertisement, not, a spe not specifying the native or non-native. And then what happened was we are able to hire excellent teacher from Thailand, for example, Korea, mm -hmm. uh, Philippines. And uh, because uh, we had a kind of uh, like uh, bias, you know, native speaker versus Japanese or something like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, then we just uh, screened everything. Then the most qualified group are those from other Asian, con Asian countries who at least have very proficient experience in your own country, say Thailand, for example, so speaks Thai. And, uh, you know, of course, the English teacher, so in speaking English and some of them speaks and uh, write in Japanese. So that kind of thing. So it's binary distinction mm. and talking about which is better or something. That is also, I would say in a very strong word, outdated. Mm. Yeah. All right, thank you. Next question, please, Dr. Aslam. Yeah, I mean, uh... Uh, just to, uh, because there are some uh, 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 postings in the chat group, and it is from the former president of Asia TEFL, Fuat mm. from Indonesia. And mm. he suggests that if you have the power, change the policy. 
and yeah. talk to the policy makers and make a new policy. So mm. thank you, Fuad, a long time friend also, former president of Asia TEFL. That's a very good line there. Okay, uh, we go to the second question. Uh, this is a very interesting question, Professor Pragasid and everyone. As a professional networking group, how do you extend help in different, less fortunate Asian countries during this pandemic, especially in remote places to uplift the education of the less privileged? I think it's a very interesting question. So mm. over to you, Professor Pagasit. Yeah, panelists, uh, anyone uh, wants to go first? Okay, just, just very briefly, uh, I'm not representing any organizations at the moment, but on a personal basis, I have done the best I can to share resources. My Facebook group has a lot of resources that are available for members and also non-members. I have also created a website where I put a lot of ideas, a lot of you know, uh, information and a lot of published materials as well. Uh, video, teaching videos, and uh, my presentations is all available on my YouTube channel as well. So that is one thing that I can do to reach out and uh, to help people uh, out there who have little access to information that is normally available in countries like Singapore or in Korea. But I think Asia TEFL has also done a great job. Chu Kyung, maybe you can share some of the things that Asia TEFL has done in order to, you know, to help to support uh, people from the low resource countries mm. in Asia and also beyond. Right. Actually, um, those underprivileged people will include those who cannot get access to this uh, internet or the, the personal computer and all. So uh, um, actually, Asia TEFL uh, hasn't had anything uh, particular for uh, during this pandemic, but uh, I think it's time for us to do something. But um, uh, what we can do is through this, our uh, the professional networks that we already have, um, we, we can get some volunteers and send them to these remote uh, places and then uh, help them in person because they cannot get access to this internet and, and all. And, and I'm sure this is an issue, not only for us, but for, for everybody and all the, at the governmental level, uh, the, the local governments and the, the federal government uh, try to do something for these people uh, specifically. But I think um, we uh, as an uh, ELT professionals can do something for, for them. Uh, but the first thing we need to uh, locate uh, those people who are in need. And then uh, we have this uh, regional uh, groups um, headed by the regional representative. So, uh, they can uh, serve as the liaison to locate these people who are in need and then uh, find some volunteers to go and help with them. So I think that's, that's something that we can do. Mm. Thank you. Uh, maybe I can add something okay, uh, sure. which might be useful for some of the uh, people in the audience, especially those coming from low resource countries. Uh, I belong to this organization, a foundation called Extensive Reading Foundation. It's based in Japan. The people behind this foundation are people like me, are people, uh, some other people who are really, really passionate about reading, about the importance of promoting reading basically to the world. And we've got some funds actually to help needy schools who want to start a reading program in their school. So we used to send books to them for free. In Japan, reading is very popular and students, a lot of students are doing a lot of reading uh, you know, in their school, and very often the school, uh, the schools may probably discard the books after a while. So we collect these books and then send out the uh, books to uh, places to different parts of the world. We have sent books to different places, including Indonesia, uh, Vietnam, and some other countries as well. We are not rich people, uh, but we do have some money to uh, share our resources with people who really, really need help in terms of building a reading program in their school. Again, the name of the foundation is Extensive Reading Foundation. The website is also available there, ER Foundation. 
Thank you, Professor Billy. Dr. Aslam, do you have another question from the audience? We have a few questions, but uh, okay. uh, just to respond to that, uh, Professor Praga said, you know, our committee in professional networking group, they have sent a message to that question. Mm -hmm. They said that the professional network committee can invite teachers at underprivileged areas who have success successfully delivered their lesson to share the experience at our webinar. So this is the avenue. Mm -hmm. That's why this webinar is so crucial. Yes. That we can invite. So ladies and gentlemen, like Professor, uh, what uh, uh, Dr. Willy mentioned, we are here as one uni united group of ELD mm -hmm. practitioners. Mm -hmm. you'll, never, you'll never walk alone, yeah? We work together. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Professor Pragasit, I think we have Dr. Arifa. I mean, Professor Arifa back. She's back. Yeah, she's back. Yeah. All right. Dr. Arifa. I'm very sorry. I mean, I've just uh, did the whole thing. There's such a huge storm and I think I got disconnected. So I'm logged back in now. Is it, I mean, do I have time to do my little bit? Yes, sure. Okay, please go okay. ahead. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Uh, uh, can you say, would you help? Dr. Yeah. Ali found the show. I, right. I can, yes. I can, yes. Oh, dear. This is not the one. Uh, can you see now? Yep. Yep. Yes, okay. Uh, how much time do I have? Uh, uh, about 10 minutes. Okay. Is it possible? Fine. Yeah, Thank it you. is. I mean, I can do that. I'm sorry. I mean, it's been kind of uh, disrupted. So I think I've lost the flow. But what you had asked me was uh, that uh, if uh, I could uh, talk about, you know, national and local uh, teachers associations and what roles do they play in this professional network initiatives. So what I'd like to do is just talk about uh, the normal language teachers associations and then and their long standing partnership pra practices. And then I'll uh, uh, then I'm just move on to the pandemic era and sit and after, as we go into the pandemic area, we went into the pandemic and how some of the, some of us or the language teachers association in Asia started kind of, um, you know, uh, kind of uh, becoming more dynamic and started new, new processes. So, uh, uh, normally, what would have the partnership operations would be like, you know, having uh, mutual agreements and then the benefits would be inviting representatives and facilitating their attendance to one another's international conferences with registration waivers and free accommodation. And we'd be exchanging publications and accessing publications and invitations to publish. But what happens after that? After that, uh, we need to uh, uh, the what happened uh, on what oh, yeah. as Belta personally Belta is our uh, association in Bangladesh, and uh, I can't seem to move the, uh, the the case of Belta. The Belta is the Bangladesh English Language Teachers Association. It's the it's it was established in 1984, and uh, with now we have 3,000 plus members. And, and, and uh, biannual conference and other things that normally language teachers associations do. But what happened was in uh, 19, uh, to, on the 13 to 15 March, we had scheduled our, our ninth Belta International Conference 2020. Then the pandemic hit and we the country went into long, the country actually um, canceled a large, uh, very important uh, all country international uh, celebration of the 100th birth anniversary of the father of the nation. And of course, all, everything else was kind of postponed and we had to postpone our uh, conference on the 8th of March with just about four to five days, you can imagine what uh, chaos that uh, that caused, the damage control that went in, but this is not part of our uh, talk now. I'll go on to the next bit, now, what is happening. 
what we had to do was we had to go back to what <clears throat> as uh, we continued uh, in our own the teachers continued with all the uh, re uh, emergency remote learning and all that but then we thought how could we you know kind of uh, start a partnership uh, uh, things you know partnership uh, activities so what we have had with uh, with the George Sig THT, which is the teachers helping teachers, uh, Sig special interest group in Japan. We've had a collaboration with them for 14 years, where uh, overseas volunteer teachers uh, provide teacher development conferences and workshops that exhibit pra practical student and teacher friendly approaches to language education that are informed by current research in the field. Now, these uh, volunteers from SAIL, from THT, would come and on their, you know, they would uh, kind of have their uh, support, their own uh, travel, and we would give them uh, kind of hospitality in country and give all other facilities. But it was all very voluntary and very much a kind of a giving of uh, the teachers. And the, the, the name itself is actually kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, it describes what it does, teachers helping teachers. So what we did was during the pandemic on October 30 and 31st, uh, THD and Belta, we uh, arranged a Zoom virtual teacher training and development program, which was uh, online EFL teaching and learning and practical tips and techniques. The important thing was it was very practical and uh, teachers were off and most of our teachers were still doing very kind of tentative, you know, uneducated and guessing at what to do. They would think that it's almost that a replication of a face-to-face uh, -face class on the thing and, and teach and students were, get, were getting bored. So we got a whole lot of new ideas and uh, everyone uh, kind of, that was a, a very good contribution from a partner uh, teachers organization. Now, uh, we thought about again reaching out we our uh, postponed uh, conference we started rethinking how could we now have another conference uh, so our ninth inter belta international conference we started rethinking it as a virtual conference and we held it as a uh, on a, a single full day conference march 6 2021 before it was a three-day face-to-face one but we didn't have all those uh, resources and the virtual technology to have a parallel sessions and all that so we decided to do a one day one and the theme of course we had to change the theme we, th we changed it to education during the pandemic learning amid crisis and emerging opportunities we had 11 international national presentations but the most important thing was we reached out to nine uh eight language teachers associations and they were kind of the backbone of the whole conference there we we uh, uh, organized two panel discussions with these nine uh, ours included eight plus one balta and we had these panel discussions now uh why is it not moving no, the nine partner LTA, LTAs we reached out to, and with that we had already, you know, agreements with them. The MOUs they were INET from India, uh, all is all India Association of English Teachers, spelt from Pakistan, the Pakistan Society of Pakistan English Language Teachers, NELTA Nepal from uh, NELTA ne 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 English Language Teachers Association. We reached out to MELTA, the Malaysian. Uh, English Language Teachers Association, JOLT, of course, Japan, and LTAI. India has another very large uh, association called LTAI, which is the English Language Teachers Association of India. Teflin had become a new partner with us, Teflin from Indonesia, and Koti Sol from South Korea, and of course, Belta was part of the uh, LTAs. Now, I would like to talk about the panel discussions where our key, key kind of things that we gave to uh, why 
I'm sorry, I'm finding it very difficult to move the slides. Okay, we had two panel discussions. Uh, and these were, one was uh, country perspectives of the pandemic situation on education and the alternative modalities of learning and teaching that each country was going through. And, it, and then we had another one. The second one was looking ahead into post-COVID strategies for education and ELT. So we were, think, we were discussing what was happening currently and also we were we tried to kind of also think about reflect on what was going to happen in the future when uh, hopefully the pandemic had uh, you know kind of come under control and whether i mean what education would look like then so in these two uh, panel discussions because i don't have much time i'm going to look at just the summary of the important points that were raised we looked at uh, treating uh, the, the, the discussions, uh, through the discussion, these are the important points that came up, uh, treating new challenges as new opportunities. I think that has been uh, all over, uh, you know, uh, creating online interactive spaces for members. See, members were there, but they were almost faceless. And we were now thinking more about, you know, bringing in members. So, so interactive spaces, welcoming and developing a sense of belonging for the members. And uh, Joel gave a very good presentation on that, saying how they were bringing in new members and how they were mentoring them and making them feel at home and giving them a name and a face. Then uh, we, with the important thing, of course, of course, was that they were everybody was pivoting towards webinars, webinars, and increasingly frequent webinars. Um, uh, frequently held webinars. So everybody was now, you know, our lives today, like we have about attend three or four webinars every day. It ran, and we're into the late night also thinking about all the different time zones and offering free online teacher development programs. What had happened was before is uh, teacher development program. Now we could do much more online teacher development programs. And we were creating learning communities within local and wider contexts. Most of the um, teachers associations actually, you know, emphasize that. And the, and the what are the next thing that we have to, we were looking at in 10 minutes and the last bit, sorry. What were the expectations for the future? We were thinking all the, the 11 and the nine LTAs were absolutely, you know, uh, kind of focused on meaningful partnership and collaboration on building a synergetic relationship among the LTAs. Not only these nine, but we'd have more uh, LTAs joining us, working towards sustainable sustainable professional networking, working with a, another thing that came up very much, you know, over and over again, this working with a sense of respect, empathy, kindness, and tolerance to all. And the important strategy, as someone from Cotisol actually brought it up, being all together, and so being a sense of community. And therefore, what we needed was to build, oh God, so we were moving towards communities of practice, the COP, this organic partnering of the LTAs, the collaboration through mutual understanding, the creating of compatible practices. I mean, we've, we stopped the word of sharing best practices, but that is something that has become obsolete. What are shared best practices? We have to find out, we have to navigate, and we have to actually adapt to best practices. So sharing and learning from each other. And I'd like to end with a little, uh, this has already been actually uh, used by Willie Ranandaya and somebody actually at the panel discussion, I think it was Dawn from Jolt who, uh, who, gave, who presented this old African saying, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Thank, Thank you very you. much, uh, uh, Professor Arifa. We have learned Thank a lot uh, from your great experience, okay, especially you enlighten us in terms of how organizations of language teaching associations in Asia can collaborate to lead networking initiatives. Ladies and gentlemen, we have finished the first round of the panel discussion from the four panelists uh, from Korea, Singapore, Japan, and Bangladesh. Now, I will have each panelist 
uh, to sum up the main points or add anything they wish to say, if any, okay? Uh, uh, we'd like to start first, Professor Park. Hey, once again, um, as I uh, told you, um, please remember this motto of uh, networking, join, and then uh, be ready to be joined by others. And in order to do that, you need to make yourself uh, someone uh, who uh, anyone would uh, like to work with you. And uh, the availability is, is really important. And uh, as Willie said, uh, networking is not only for getting help, but uh, also, and more importantly, giving help to others. And I think Asia TIFL is, is a, a very exceptional, wonderful uh, um, open forum for all of us to, to uh, practice that. Thank you. Thank you. Professor Billy, you have something to add? Yes, working together with other people is a great, great opportunity for us to continue to grow, uh, you know, in our knowledge, in our expertise, in whatever area uh, we are focusing on. Uh, I think you, I'm reminded of the, uh, the big theory of social, you know, uh, learning theory, where learning actually happens when you are in a company of other people who are supportive of your learning uh, development trajectory. So it's a great way for you to learn, to relearn, and also to unlearn. That is another important thing. In today's world, things are happening so fast. Things are happening in, you know, in ways that are not predictable. But if you are together with other people, I think chances are you'll be able to learn together and you'll be able to learn many more things that you are not able to learn uh, alone. One thing to remember is this. Ask not what your contacts, what your network can do for you, but ask what you can do for other people. I think Thank that is you. a very famous saying from John F. Kennedy. I think Professor Lee uh, knows this very well, remembers this very well. Ask not what your country can do for you, but ask what you can do for your country. The same thing applies when it comes to networking. It's about growing your relationship. It's about maintaining your relationship. It's about giving. And in the process of giving, you will be getting a lot of you know, wonderful things that come to your life. Thank you so much. Professor Oda. Yes, this uh, JFK phrase. Uh, yes. <laughs> actually, uh, what I did to my student as a kind of my inauguration as a dean of a college of humanities. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, it is, the learning is a continuous process. Even if it happens slowly, this continuity is very, very important. At some point you start, yes, there's always a beginning. You start, you meet more people and you get more information. And then the longer you do, you try to figure out what, to, what, what, is your, what your priority is. And when you become the uh, certain position, now you, for example, become a teacher, trainer or something. Now you are ready to contribute. And then, then just it's kind of, uh, you know, continuous reflection, recycling process and just we all get together and build up a profession. Thank you. Finally, Professor Arifa, your final words, please. Thank you. Uh, my final words would be like creating these communities of practice. I mean, this is something that we've started and I hopefully uh, we will continue to grow. And as uh, bar, uh, Dr. Park has said and, and uh, Willie Renandaya has said, this giving and and you know sharing and be prepared to give. This is something that is so important in my South Asian culture. We are pre very conservative, you know, usually about our own association. Oh, this is my association. I'll do it this way, and we will not con have any context with other association, which is absolutely not the way to go in this now this field this world, the new norm that has taken place. And we need to be absolutely um, kind of uh, 
be open and be kind of share and collaborate and, and create partnerships. And only then we can create a sort of a synergy that all everybody will be benefited from. And the important thing that I've, I did not mention before is that I would like to also focus on join research. Research is so important for our field because the research findings are the watchdog for policies and for ways that we can go forward in academia, in pedagogy, in all other fields of applied linguistics. And that is my takeaway for today. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank all the panelists for their wonderful talk. Uh, panelists, your time and contribution to this webinar is much appreciated. And on behalf of Asia Tier 4 organization, I, will, I would like to sincerely thank all of you one more time, okay, for your talk and your, uh, 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 your, your time, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, over to you, uh, Dr. Aslam. Dr. Aslan, can you turn on your microphone, please? Thank you very much, Professor Pragase. Don't go away. We still have a little bit of announcement to be made. And thank you to all my great friends, Dr. Willy, Professor Masaki Oda, Professor Park, Professor Arifa. Thank you for being with us today. Great friends. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, there were questions about membership in... Uh, Asia TEFL. So without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Masaki Oda to make a brief presentation regarding membership in Asia TEFL. Over to you, Professor Masaki Oda. Okay, thank you very much. And I'm, uh, I'm wearing two hats, but let me give you another uh, PowerPoint here. It's very, very brief. Uh, first, thank you very much for joining. And also I'd like to thank you very much for the organizing committee uh, for this, uh, you know, we just got to have a new good start of the history of Asia Teflon. But anyway, here's the uh, first. I'd like to uh, do a brief uh, announcement of the conference, uh, which is December three to five. It's online and on site. And uh, here, I I know that uh, Professor I I believe Professor Mohanty. Uh, who is the convention chair there the, is in the audience, but I will just go through this. This is the, uh, yeah. And important thing is if you still want to share something, the call for paper is open and it's been extended until June the 15th. So uh, please consider if you have something to share, something to contribute, sharing is very, very important. Okay. And uh, here is some information here. Now, uh, although this uh, webinar series is uh, open, uh, but uh, we'd like to ask you to become a member and they have a member has a lot of benefit, but including when you present the, at the conference and uh, you get a substantial uh, discount fee, a discount uh, conference registration fee, and also have other networking and other events and you can participate that. And um, so there are three important websites here. The first one is the Asia TEFO website, which you have a lot of information about Asia TEFO, as well as this uh, membership information. You, you have a menu, it depends on your browser, but uh, if you are uh, uh, using Windows and then Chrome or like uh, Internet Explorer or something, it generally appears on the right hand side and you have membership menu. And you click on the membership and uh, you just have a lot of information about this and uh, how to do that. And the membership period run from January to December, regardless of joining. But uh, again, you get at least one conference discount for this and then the other really starts there. And the second one, uh, it's a conference website for the 20, uh, 20, uh, 2021 conference in India. And so if you, uh, want to participate in the conference. Uh, the, the, there's the information on the call for paper, uh, abstract submission is there. So please go to the second one. Third one is uh, we recently uh, no, uh, re-established the official Facebook of Asia Tefo. 
And uh, because, uh, this is like uh, under the public relation, uh, a publicity committee headed by uh, Professor Jukin Park. And uh, I'm kind of in charge of this, even this when I was doing this and I got a lot of membership application. Uh, I'd like to uh, make one important announcement for this. I mean, this is a public uh, Facebook, so you can, uh, you can see all the announcement uh, without joining as a member or friends, I would say. I don't want to confuse this, the friends of Facebook, without becoming your friends. But uh, on the other hand, in the past, there has been some like bad people. I know it's good, all, you are all good people here, but bad people who pretend to be something related to HFO, but they posted something really strange something. So when you request to join it, uh, you have to read this uh, regulation and you have to agree on it. And that you may be rejected. Actually, I had to reject about 20 doing my presentation. And I, I, I mean, it's not I don't like you, but uh, no, this is just try, try to protect you. So again, now the summary is you can uh, see the announcement there. And also, but uh, I want you to make sure that you are in the profession there. And so please remember. And also this is a different from, because I strongly recommend uh, that's Willis group, they teach, uh, teacher voices, that, that is more the discussion and information exchange forum, whereas this Asia TEFO, the Asia TEFO Association, this is the name of the Facebook page. There's other uh, pages which looks, uh, you know, has like Asia TEFO, Asian TEFO or something, those fake pages there, but Asia TEFO Association page. And that is more like information, disseminating information from our organization activities. So uh, please join the boss. And uh, that's all. And thank you very much. OK, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Masaki Oda. Thank you very much. Uh, those of you who are still thinking about Asia TEFL membership, please go to the website. You get all the details. Everything is there. And Professor Masaki Oda will personally look into all membership. Yes, well done, Professor Pro, uh, 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 Professor Masaki Oda for uh, that short briefing. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember, this is a webinar series. So we have done with webinar one. What is in store in webinar two on July 17? On July 17, make a date with us, embracing the new normal in English language from a pedagogical perspective, innovation approaches and methodologies for classroom best practices. So remember, book your date early, get registered, and we will see you on the 17th. But before we say goodbye, before we say goodbye, it is important to share with you from the beginning, uh, you know, everyone was saying, you know, who are the people behind organizing this webinar? They are from Malaysia, Thailand, and Co South Korea. Let's have a quick show of who are the people behind this magnitude, magnitude uh, organization in uh, making sure that the webinar is a great success. So ladies and gentlemen, sit back and see who they are. Professor Pragasit Sititiko from Thailand. Ms. Chai Zunyu from Malaysia. Dr. Savika Warapon from Thailand. Ms. Fiona Sadagopan from Malaysia. Mr. Kitipat Chutichai Virat from Thailand. Ms. Noor Hezrin Anwar from Malaysia. Mr. Kitty Chai Nilobol from Thailand. Professor Hik Yang Lee from South Korea. And that's me, Aslam Khan from Malaysia. Ms. Tanbirko Sekon from Malaysia. 
Dr. Zaira Abu Hassan Chari from Malaysia. Ms. Grace Chang Siu Ying from Malaysia. Mr. Luk Manmai from Thailand. Datin Dr. Raja Mazwin from Malaysia. And last but not least, Dr. Ali Ahmad Suman from Malaysia. The 15 committee members of Asia TEFL Professional Network Committee members. So ladies and gentlemen, I mean, with uh, that, webinars. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, we have come to the end of the first webinar. All right. So it is a great pleasure to have met all of you. And thank you to the speakers, the moderator, and most importantly, all of you participants from more than 50 countries for joining us today. So on that note, we see you in July. Stay blessed, keep safe, stay connected, and take care wherever you are. We are the world. And thank you so much. Goodbye, everyone. Sayonara. Thank you. Goodbye. Namaste. And see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone.